It was the most clicked on story on FoxNews.com, the most viewed clip on YouTube. Chris Wallace's interview with President Clinton was almost the biggest thing to happen to TV, certainly over this weekend. And it's because Clinton became visibly upset when Chris asked him about his handling of terrorist Osama bin Laden while he was in office. So what happened behind the scenes? Chris Wallace joins the live desk now from Boston Today. Hi, Chris. Good to have you with us. Well, thank you, Martha. Congratulations on your new show. I'm uh, honored to be on the first one. Thank you. It's an honor to have you. And it was quite uh, incredibly riveting television to watch over the weekend, your interview with President Clinton. And sort of the, the second day talk on all of this is that it's democratic strategy, that they wanted to show that Clinton was uh, giving everybody an example of how to get tough on terror. There's he, there he is pointing his finger at you. Uh, but it was a very visceral reaction that he had. What was your feeling for how much he planned to say? and how much he said well I, I don't think that and I've, I've heard this now today that this is a you know a, a, a planned democratic strategy that wasn't the way it played in the room at all Martha uh, I we, we had strict ground rules 15 minutes half on his Clinton global initiative a wonderful program to raise money for impoverished nations and the other half on anything we wanted to ask this was the third question I asked and he just blew and and uh, his uh, communications director was jabbing my, my producer in the arm saying end this interview right away when it was over uh, Clinton did not want to make up and be friends he was still fuming and as he left he uh, started yelling at his aides that if they ever put him in that kind of a situation again he would fire them so I do not think this was pre-planned I think uh, all this talk now is mm -hmm. after the fact spinning by somebody very interesting. It, it, and, you know, the other thing that we're taking a closer look at now that everything is sort of settling a little bit on this is, is the facts of what he had to say. And those are starting to be contested a bit as well uh, as we look at it. And one of the things that he said was that he couldn't go in there uh, to to get at the Taliban in Afghanistan because there, he didn't have access to a base in Uzbekistan. Is that true? Well, he said two things. First of all, that uh, he didn't have landing rights in Uzbekistan, which certainly were key. And in fact, when we invaded Afghanistan, we did have those landing rights. He also said that the CIA and the FBI did not certify that Al Qaeda was responsible for the attack on the coal. This was in the final three months of his uh, of his term in office in late fall of 2000. The interesting thing is, when we looked into it after the fact, the 9/11 Commission said that this issue of invading Afghanistan was never seriously discussed on any level of interagency review either in the Clinton or the Bush administration so somebody may have talked about it but this talk about uh, getting full battle plans uh, does not seem to have been borne out you know the other thing I thought nobody could have been happier with this interview than Richard Clark it was like a big boost for his book he, he must have wanted to give the president a huge hug uh, after he got off the air but there's also the discrepancy about whether or not Richard Clark sort of wanted to step aside a little bit into a different area of intelligence and that that didn't actually happen until until after September 11th, he was, uh, as Clinton put it, demoted. Yeah, the interesting thing, uh, though, about that is that, uh, that the president, President Clinton, kept on talking about Richard Clark, who was his top anti-terror advisor, as the authoritative source on what he did do or didn't do. Well, Clark does say, we went back and looked at the record, Clark says that Clinton was obsessed with getting uh, bin Laden and that the CIA failed him. On the other hand, he talks about the fact that, uh, for instance, in 1999, there was an effort uh, he wa was pushing to bomb al-Qaeda before the millennium. All that talk that there was going to be a terror attack at the time. Time. He brought this to President Clinton's national security advisor, Sandy Berger, and Berger wrote on the memo one word, no. Mm -hmm. So Clinton's record, at least from the, the lips of, uh, of Richard Clark, is not quite as pure as he indicates it was. Just one more quick one, Chris. It, it, was it your sense from talking to him that he's more concerned about his own legacy or that he wants to set the tone for Democrats in the future and wants them to, to not take anything lying down? Well, I think that it's certainly uh, both is the case, but I think that what set him off in that interview, and I, I, again, I do not think it was pre-planned at all, is I think he's been boiling. Part of it may have been the ABC docudrama. Mm. Uh, it may just be the, their criticisms. I think he feels he, there's a double standard that he's judged more harshly than George W. Bush. And, and so as soon as this happened, it was as if I had just hit with what I thought a non-confrontational question had hit a very raw nerve. And he just went off with conspiracy theories 
and a right wing hit job. And uh, but I think on the other hand, he also feels that, you know, this is the best way for Democrats to be. There's only one side to play in politics, and that's offense. All right. It was fascinating television, Chris. Great interview. And thank you so much for being with us today. Again, congratulations. Thanks, Chris.